Everybody. Welcome to Chit Chat Chop. Uh, Adam, if you can hear me, I'm having audio trouble, so I'm just going to try to fix that, but I'm going to keep on talking. Uh, anyway, tonight we have a great episode for you. Uh, really excited to have the crew from Dear Friend Bar here uh, and um, on Portland Street in Dartmouth, 69 Portland Street. Uh, so we've got Matt, Jeff, and Brad with us tonight. Uh, so we're going to start with Chef Brad. Chef Brad, how you doing? Um, if you could just oh. go ahead, I can't hear you right now. I'm going to work on that. But uh, while you, uh, while you, you tell you? us about this amazing dish you're going to make, I'm going to fix my audio, and you're going to tell us all about what you're going to make. Okay. Well, per well, first of all, thank you so much for having us on the program. It's been a dream of mine since I was a young boy to be able to to grace the stage of Chit Chat Chop, and I'm finally here, and and that's great. Before we start doing that, I'm actually going to crack a can because every time you're cooking, it's nice to have a little a little beverage with you. I'm cracking a can of our new Cucumber Ricky. That's the Clever Barkeep in the Windmill Cocktail Company. Mm. Okay, now that that's done, um, we're going to start with the cooking. Is everything good on your side? We're ready to go? Still not. Brad, you're doing an awesome job talking about this right now. I still can't hear you, but keep going. That lime rookie looked delicious. Okay. And I know so, it's a miso uh, situation you got it going is, on. There. It's the end of August. Summer's fading, sadly. I feel like we've had so much time taken away from us already. So we're going to try to extend the summer vibes for as long as we can. And so today we're going to be making our miso lime shrimp cocktail. Shrimp cocktails for me are just like, the most summery, fun, light thing. They go with any drink, any beer, any wine, all of it. So we're gonna start off with that. So most important thing is the shrimp that you're gonna be using. We use, we get our shrimp from Aficionado, the great people at Aficionado, and we use um, Vietnamese tiger shrimp. These are a, a 60-20, which is the size. They're kind of, they're bigger. We get them with the shell on. Um, I prefer getting them with the shell on just because they have less of a chance to kind of tighten up and curl up into that kind of like little shrimp puck thing that sometimes you see. Um, so yeah, so one of the biggest issues I find when people are making or cooking shrimp is that they actually boil them when the best thing you want to be doing is poaching them, just like gently bringing them up in that warm water. So you're not just getting these like rubbery, gross kind of little shrimp puck things. So I have uh, eight cups of water and it's super important that we're using a specific amount of water because we're flavoring that amount of water with a specific amount of um, seasonings. So that's eight cups of water. We're going to do, we're going to heavily season our water. We always use kosher salt. If you don't have kosher salt, like iodized salt is fine, but it would be preferred for you to have kosher salt because it just it just tastes better. The the grains of the salt kind of dissolve slower, which gives you a better salt taste for all of it. So that's a couple handfuls of salt. These are just red uh, pepper flakes. Um, so that's probably about mm, three tablespoons of red pepper flakes into the water because we're not only seasoning our shrimp, but we're seasoning our water. To then season the shrimp. Szechuan pepper. Super Ooh. important. Pepper is the spice of life. And if you don't use it properly, then you're not living properly. Um, I like using Szechuan peppercorns because it's spicy. It's spicy, but it's also like, it's that tingly kind of like sensation you get from it, which is super awesome. <laughs> I love how uh, Szechuan peppercorns, you can actually like, make something s spicier with your chilies and then add the peppercorns to sort of numb out some of that heat. Exactly. Really it's not chili. Just, yeah. like that plain black pepper, like peppery flavor. It's like, it's a whole, it's a whole other thing. So this is two tablespoons Szechuan peppercorns into the water. Nice. Um, ginger. 
this is about just I would say a three inch nub of ginger. Normally you're gonna see people take the skin off of it. I don't, just because the skin also tastes like ginger, and if you can have as much of that flavor in it as possible, then that's that's what you want. So we're just going. We're just oh, gonna sorry, go ahead. Ginger. Uh huh. And we're just gonna toss that in there. Next thing going in our pot, shallot. If you don't have a shallot, you can use like, I would say a quarter of a white onion. Shallots are not as strong as onions. They're a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not as strong. But if you only got a white onion, then do what do what you have. I like to describe shallot as somewhere in between garlic and onion because it is it does have that sweetness of onion, but you yeah, also Yeah, they're, like, they're sweet, they're sweet little things. They're sweet little babes. Yeah. After that we're gonna do uh, bay leaf. Just three whole bay leaves, add a little aromatic to it. And then we're gonna do one full lime into the water as well. Um, so I'm just gonna cut that in half and I'm just gonna squeeze that, squeeze that in. Make sure you get your hands all over it. And that's what you know, you have little cuts in your hands too, right? When you're that's really juicing. How you know. yeah. I'll be juicing lemons at the start of each day. And that's when I get to find all of my new little oyster shucking cuts. So I'm like, yep. oh, I didn't know you were there. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's all in there. Um, but it's not done yet because we have to let it, let everything boil in the water for like a minute to two minutes, just so you're actually getting all of the flavor out of it. Yeah, you're not extracting any flavor. You don't let it simmer a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to have these beautiful little shrimpy boys to just throw them in unflavored, unsalted water because that's that's no fun. You got a good tr product. You want to treat it with respect. Yes, of course. Yeah. There's that. What's that saying? It's the whole the whole point of cooking is just to to get the best ingredients and not screw them up. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that matters. So yeah. Matt and Jeff must be loving that because you're talking the chef talk. That's some good chef talk right there. Listen, I know it all. I learned from the best. <laughs> well, you kind of have. I mean, uh, you, you started at the, well, as far as I know, like you started at the canteen with Renee. I did. And then you uh, spent a good part of last year working with Andy Hay, uh, doing yep. a lot of uh, East Coast, uh, East Coast, I almost said lifestyle, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, East Coast kitchen stuff. So, I, well, that's yeah. how I met you a year ago. At I'm a... Uh, I'm a Dartmouth boy, born and raised. I, I've been working on Portland Street for, for quite a while now, and I, I love it so much. Like starting at a place like the Canteen, like you just, you're just exposed to so much in yeah. such a fast amount of time, and then leaving that and going working at the East Coast Kitchen with the lovely chef Andy Hay, mm -hmm. um, you know, we just also get to experience so many. So many interesting people. Andy Hay, who also I believe has not been on Chit Chat Shop yet. Well, I think we uh, we need to see if he's uh, if he's uh, you know off the Instagram and can uh, take a second. Uh, I don't think that he should be on. I think that he's 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 missed his chance, and it's too late. All right, so the water, <laughs> shut down. The water is now infused with all of the lovely things that we've put in it. Yep. So this is a pound of uh of the tiger shrimp shell on there's no they're de-veined if you have shrimp that has the vein in it i'm sorry i don't, I don't know just don't do that no nope, no nope, that's got to come out you, you can go and de-vein them just by slicing them down the middle and mm -hmm. scraping it out but like don't do that just buy just buy the shrimp without them in. okay top tip top tip yeah, that's a, that's a hot kitchen tip. All right, so I'm gonna throw these guys into the water. And what you got on, like a like a simmer situation? Yeah, it's boil? it's not a simmer. So the water was at a boil, but right as you add the cold shrimp, it's gonna drop immediately. Obviously. Yeah. Um, and that's actually good because we don't want the shrimp bumping around, boiling, and kind of like breaking up in the tough water. We just want them poached. Same kind of like bubbling you would poach an egg in. Treat it like you would treat an egg. There we go. Just a, just another delicate protein. Yes. And we're going to, I have a little timer here. We're going to set that for four minutes. And we're going to let that go. That's really nicely amplified by the uh, by the microphone. So oh. we're, we're definitely going to hear that, that timer oh, go thank, Oh, thank God. We're not going to miss it. All right. So after that, let's do, I call it a vinaigrette. It's not really a vinaigrette. 
it's similar to a vinaigrette, but you know. Well, how about I'll I'll be I'll be a judge of that. Let's see. Let's, okay, yeah, let's, thank you. You be yeah, the judge. Yeah. So, the base of this is uh, is miso. If you don't know what miso is, it's a it's a fermented soybean paste, mm -hmm. and it's super deep. It's sweet. It's salty. It kind of like hits all those like flavors. You got that umami in there. That. That lovely word, that lovely umami word. Yeah. So you're, you're going to be getting lots of that. And the best thing about this vinaigrette is there really isn't a recipe for it. And I'll show you. It's however much miso paste you have, mm -hmm. it's just enough lime juice to just thin it out and make it kind of more like a smooth, creamy vinaigrette. But we'll try, we'll try to measure it. So this is about, cool. I would say, a tablespoon and a half of miso paste mm -hmm. and we're going to with our microplane we're going to zest the limes into the miso nice you got a the lime while, zest is so key yeah all while keeping an eye on our shrimp making sure they're not being overcooked or destroyed in the pot so this is one lime zested this is two limes Zested. I'm learning so much about the menu. I know, right? Because yeah. I never tell the burgers how to actually make things. That's why. I like to keep it a secret. Everybody's got a secret to keep. Brad's got proprietary information, guys. Get him to write stuff down. Matt and Jeff, I'm telling you right now. Get this guy yeah. to write something down. Are people asking questions yet? Do they want to know my secrets at well, all? Well, the, the, the latest thing I saw in here, Brad, was uh, Evan McNeil commented, Brad, with three exclamation points. Yeah. So, uh... That's love, love that guy, sweet guy. And uh, Chris Smith McDonald is sending out love to her nephew Jeff. Oh, oh hey, yeah, don't so, know to do that. It's not his time yet, don't bring him up. Yeah, and then uh, Kitchen Door says, Andy, hey, we're looking at you, so that's a little intimidating. Uh, so yeah. that might work, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, these shrimp, they're just they're bubbling Chit away. Chit -chat -chat. Okay, so there's two limes zested into this bowl. Yep. And the juice. Oh, is, okay, yeah. We have our little hand. What do you call this? Juice press. This is juice, yeah. And we're just going to juice once. This is half of a lime. Uh, just a wild guess here, but I'm saying you guys go through a lot of citrus there. We, we've been known to go through a lot of citrus. We have the citrus hookup. Oh. Um, thank you, Juicy Fruit. Juice Man's killing it. <laughs> Well, juicy fruit is gonna move you. Juicy fruit. That's if it's if that's not they're saying, it should be. It's okay. it's got the taste that goes right through you. Yeah. Yeah. So we got so that's one full juice. That's one lime fully juiced, and I'm just gonna mix this up. Oh, Anissa says zest that lime, boy. Oh, Anissa. For anybody that doesn't know Anissa, Anissa is one of our lovely. She's a dear friend. She's a friend of the show. She's so sweet. Come get served this by Anissa, and it'll and it'll be great. Okay, so this is turning like creamy, but there's yep. still like lots of miso chunks in it. Uh huh. This is what you don't want, you want like one full homogenous little bowl of miso vin. So is this everything that that's in that miso vinaigrette right there? Yeah, that's miso it, it, It's you're not adding salt. Miso is incre yep. it's not incredibly salty, but it's pretty salty. Not adding pepper. All you're looking for is that, like, that deepness, that acidity to just kind of, you know, take the shrimp where it needs to go. We're not overcomplicating things. We're keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. We're giving what, we're giving the people what they want. Absolutely. Okay. He's so hungry already. Come on, let's go. Did you hear my timer go off? <laughs> no. Did you off? All right. I well, it went off. Wow. So I'm turning. I'm turning my uh, my burner off. And I'm shocking the shrimp in a bath of ice water huh? because we don't want them to keep cooking. Because not only are you going to overcook them, but you're also going to waterlog them. Mm -hmm. So the proteins are just going to suck up all of that water. And then it'll just be like gross little bloated shrimp boys. And that's not what you want. Yeah. And would you say they're cooked to perfection right now? I would say they're pretty damn close. Excellent. I would say. Well, that's why it's great to use the ice to just stop it at that perfect point. Yes. All right, and we're going to let that sit. 
But because this is also in water again, it has another chance to become waterlogged. So we're literally just going to let them sit for like a minute until you can handle them. Mm -hmm. And then you can take them out. That's a straight up blanche right there. That's, there you go. But I'm sure you guys know this, like kitchen door catering, the finest catering and all. We actually, me, Matt, Jeff, about, when was that Exxon gig? Oh yeah, that was last, uh, was like that was last April. May. Yeah. That was when we first met. That's right. Everybody. We weren't working together all at different places. Yep. And then now look at us. Virtually connected, making We're virtually coaching connected. trip. We're talking to each other on a screen. I love it. Yeah. All right. Um, so these, like I said, it takes not a whole lot of time at all. You don't want them to get waterlogged. Mm -hmm. The shells are still on them, but because they've been, they've been cooked, they're just going to peel right off. Right. So I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take these off, but I'm going to make sure that that little kind of like the tail stays on. Because if not, it's like, that's like, if I take like, that's sad. Oh, what? Oh, this nobody is a wants, nobody video wants, now. what do you do that for? If you go to a restaurant and you order an $18 shrimp cocktail and they send you out that, throw it on the ground. Oh, you're, it, that, that's painful. Right? That's painful. Ask for your money back. Andrew. And there's, there's a satisfaction of, you know, like putting the shrimp in your mouth and then just pulling off that little bit of, you know, that little bit yes. of tail. Yes. It's a, it's a whole thing. So I'm, okay. So I'm peeling these off. They're a little bit warm. They're cold to my to my hand, though. So wait, what what is kit? I feel like I haven't been up to date on the kitchen door catering universe. Well, I, yeah. On Instagram, I see your face a lot, actually, which is very refreshing. Well, well, thank you, thank you. Uh, I mean, it's uh, I'm trying to keep the the beer groom, but as everybody will see uh, shortly, Matt has got uh, he's got he's got some beard on me now. It looks like Grizzly uh, Adams just running through the bar constantly. Yeah, everybody needs a little bit of crazy. I I, I love it. Uh, kitchen door's doing great. Uh, Patty has been uh, well. She's just Patty's a machine. Uh, she's yeah. Been, oh wait, can we talk about that? She kind of ghosted us tonight. Oh hey hey, Patty as uh, let let's just say that Patty doesn't ghost anybody. Patty, uh, I don't I don't know. I think she. Uh, I don't know. She's a busy woman. That's all I'm gonna say. Like she was ready to go. She loves you guys. She's gonna come in for a drink soon, but. I think I. Th you know what, Brad? Between you and me, I think she was feeling sorry for me. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Like I haven't hosted chit chat chop in a while. Oh, that's why. Well, I've been stuck in this room gave, for gave. like that's six fair. months. That's fair. Yeah. No, but uh, everything's going well. Like it's, uh, you know, obviously there's not the, uh, the the catering that everybody had. We're we're uh, doing a lot of uh, curbside pickup and stuff, and yeah, uh, people can pick up. Uh, like we've got uh, meal kits available and I'm teaching virtual classes now. So people can actually uh, uh, like stop by kitchen door, pick up their ingredients or just uh, give us a call and or go on the website and get a Zoom link and you can join up a class uh, with a shopping list. We can cook pad thai together. We can make risotto, all kinds of cool things. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. We're going to cook together. Excellent. Excellent. Well, you know, we can, we can trade risotto tips and, uh, and really just uh, piss I off. Got, I have so many risotto tips for you. you oh, you're not ready for my time. I was raised on Jamie Oliver. Bring it on, young gun. Okay. I was raised by, you know, Renee Lavalle, so. Oh, ready. yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right so peeled, over. Give us some shrimp. Yeah. Okay. So I, I've peeled my shrimp. The rest of them are sitting there. That's fine. I'm moving those here. I have my little bowl. So we're going to do three little shrimp, guys. Mm -hmm. You don't need an insane amount of this. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. Like, you just want it to be glazed. Right. You just want a slight glazing of, Brad, uh, of the I render, I render my verdict. Oh, I, right. Okay, wait. Okay, here. I'm getting closer. You tell me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Does that, does this kind of resemble, it's thicker. You can't even see that. It's right? got the emulsification properties of a vinaigrette, for sure. It, That's it's all I'm like, looking for. Right? It's, but it, you also, I think you said a key word earlier when you said glaze, because, you you know, you're, you're just you're just dressing the shrimp, but also it's a dressing. So there you go. The absence of vinegar, but the inclusion of acid. Therefore, no oil. But I think you're in vinaigrette territory. Therefore, I'm spot on every time. Thank there you. There you go. All right. So I'm. This is three little shrimps in my bowl. Literally, that's probably like a little bit over a teaspoon of it, and I'm stirring it around, making sure it's evenly coated, but not like saying like soaked in it. 
Oh, I just want to give a little shout out. We got a few uh, a few joiners here. Charlotte Fwelling, good to see you. A big fan of Kitchen Door, and we're a big fan of you. And Ivan Chan from the Orient, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Ivan us. Chan. Ivan Chan, legend, big fan man, of the legend. You're, we've met a few times, and your stuff rocks, and you're really cool. So that's that's great. Hope you're doing well, Ivan. Haven't talked to you in a bit, but love you, buddy. All, All right. right, we got our shrimp nicely dressed. So these shrimp nicely dressed. You can see like they almost look like they're naked. But if you look closely, there's like those really nice little green flecks of lime zest and that kind of like pale looking glaze. We'll use that word glaze again. Okay. Uh, yeah. it. And then you're going to grab your cutest little bowl. Right. Your daintiest little bowl. Is that a scallop shell bowl? It is. That's it, pretty it dainty is. and pretty cute. So that's good. I put a lot more things than just scallops in it, like shrimp today. All right. So that's in there. Mm-hmm. Usually, at, if you were to come to Dear Friend and order this, it would be the miso lime shrimp cocktail, but it also comes with a salsa verde, Ooh. a toasted sesame seed salsa verde. So it, it is like overall a very bright and like strong dish. Mm -hmm. um, but today we're keeping it simple and we're just going to do the miso lime. But to garnish it, um, I have a little bit of toasted sesame seeds. Nice. Um, toasted sesame seeds are great. They're, they're super deep in flavor and they're like when you toast them properly and not like burn them. You know, they, it's the worst. It's like the burnt popcorn situation, right? No. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things where if you're toasting sesame seeds and you're planning on walking away from it to Ooh. like deal with your child or like, you know, your grandma or whatever, don't yep. do it. leave no. them. They'll survive. Yeah. Wash your sesame seeds. They won't survive. Another top tip, Brad, uh, you're really hitting all the points tonight. We should, I hope someone is writing them down because, yeah, yeah, you know. Okay, so they're toasted. I've chopped them a little bit. So they're a little more of like a, they're crumbly. They're not like those whole sesame seeds. I kind of prefer like the feeling of them kind of more chopped up. Right. And we're just going to sprinkle those right over them. That's great. And then if you have cilantro, if you have green onion, if you have any of those kind of like, any of those herbs, that's perfect. We grow, we grow quite a bit of stuff done at the bar. Cool. Um, I have a few sprigs of Thai basil. And if you've never tried Thai basil, it's like, it's basil, but there's also like a little bit of like, kind of like a licorice anise smell to it. Yep. Um, it's super, super interesting. And it pairs with so many, so many great things. I really like corn and cherry tomatoes with Thai basil. So I love that. I love that. Absolutely. And then we're just going to put a little tiny few sprigs around it. And you know what? We might even just pour a little bit more of this vinaigrette right down the sides of it. You obviously can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to show you in a second. And it's I'm awful. banking on that. Great. It's, it's going to be a good reveal. It's just going like, to be like on one of those uh, cooking shows. You know, you just hold it. Yeah, up. there you go. Yeah. All right. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you now, Andrew. All right. Come around. All right. We have our shrimp. We have the sesame seeds. We have the Thai basil. We have the pretty bowl. It's summer. What more could you want? What more do you want? Ricky. Oh, oh. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's I was going to ask to pair it with, but now it's all right there, that cucumber. Honestly, mm -hmm. the cucumber Ricky, it pairs with everything. Fantastic. And I got I to gotta give you a little praise there, Brad, that basil placement. Well, you know, I didn't have right. my tweezers. I didn't use the tweezers. You don't need tweezers. You got two right here. I got A right there. A. Tweezers the big man upstairs gave me. There you go. There you go. There you go. Well, Brad, thank you. That was awesome. Uh, that looked delicious. And I'll bet you it's going to pair amazingly with not only that cucumber lime Ricky, but uh, maybe, uh, you know, something that you guys serve there at Dear Friend. Maybe uh, Matt and Jeff. Uh, have some uh, have some ideas, and I've got a little uh, a little test that I want to put them to in um, a minute here. Yeah, so maybe we should introduce. Hey, what's going on? How are you? You guys kind of look like brothers, actually. I could I can see that. Well, it's 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 a vibe. The whole beard is a vibe, you know. Um, it but, really shows the age, you know. The yeah, it really does. It, it really does. Like I don't have gray hairs this long anywhere else on my body. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope not. This is, this is a great food show. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, how's it going over there? Uh, you having fun watching Brad make all this uh, delicious food or what? 
Yeah, yeah, we thought we could give you a little tour, maybe of those who don't know uh, about our new venture. Awesome. So, I, I, well, this is going to be a first for me too because I saw it back probably February. No, I don't know. I, I met you guys on the street and we had a little tour. Last yeah, I think we had an ice machine at that point, and that was about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. But you were proud of that ice machine. Oh, it's it good ice. Is. It's really yeah. good ice. Clear ice is good ice. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about ice, but we're oh. right now obviously in the kitchen in the back of house, mm -hmm. um, and we make a lot out of a little here. Um, yeah. It's kind of been our our mantra or our um, you know words to live by with the clever barkeep and everything else, because through the catering company, we've been able to build this small little piece of of heaven in Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been fortunate enough to have Jet Brad uh, jump on, kind of universes colliding from mm -hmm. last year when we all hung out together at yeah. Olympic Hall to now. So, um, so I'll take you from the kitchen here, um, and you can actually, Brad gets to Bye, take oh, I'm a... Oh, the cameraman now? Get, oh, no, I mean, he gets to see this window here. You can oh. actually oh, yeah. see. So if you come to Dear Friend, you can actually see Brad shucking oysters through that man, window. The man behind the window. Man Framed behind. like a pitcher. There you are. Yeah, and there's your favorite ice machine. Ooh. Um, the cold draft, you know? Yeah. Really great. So we have, uh, we just walked through here. This is our little gallery, um, gallery wall, which is called, we call the friendship wall. Awesome. So a lot of our like mementos, uh, uh -huh. there's Portland Street, uh, the Golden Girls are up there. Nice. Kobe and Shaq, mm -hmm. some cool stuff. So this is a little nook that you can hang out in in the back. It's cozy. Um, little faux brick wall and such and then you can see it's it's it was built as a place to have people kind of be close to one another uh -huh. and then covid kind of smacked that out of existence so we built a little patio back as well mm -hmm. um but this is where the magic happens we do a lot of cocktails here and um you guys have all met jeff before go on jeff how are you doing good to see ya. you Andrew. good to see you too welcome aboard thank you thank you here you have some uh, some pairing questions for us. I do, I do. Did you want to start off with that? Yeah. I, all, right, all right, all um, right. A little challenge. A little, little challenge. How, do you do you want to handle all these? Do you want to go back and forth, you and Matt? How do you? No, we'll go back and forth. All right, here. here we go. All right, Matt, welcome aboard. All right. So first things first, I just want to say that uh, beer pairings little obvious, too easy, uh, unless they're like you know like a, a niche a niche beer. I don't know. I think I think you could. Anyway, I'll see what, we'll see. Anyway, this is new for me too, but I'm gonna have fun with this. So I would like something a little sophisticated to pair with this snack. This is, <laughs> is there zesty cheese Doritos? Ooh. Uh, they've, uh, they've got uh, Parmesan cheese flavor, garlic powder, uh, whey powder, monosodium glutamate. Oh, the good stuff. The good stuff, finger looking good even. So how would you either, you could incorporate this into a drink or you could pair something with it. I mean, <laughs> if I were to incorporate that into a drink, it would be, you know, some sort of like Caesar, Caesar riff with like crunched up chips around the rim. Yeah. You know, you could uh, just cover the whole thing in the chips. And you could go for that like a savory milkshake vibe. Yeah. Yeah, um, and maybe some jalapenos because oh yeah, cheese and jalapenos are my favorite. Nice. Right. You could even garnish with a fried jalapeno popper. I like so that. It's like you're making a nacho dish where you have the the cream element, you have the tomato element, the yep. element, the yep. crunch, the savory, the salty. Sprinkle some MSG on there and. You'll have more than one for sure. And would it be crazy to put a little sour cream into the Caesar to make it like, you know, one of these, you know, sour cream that's got some acidity to it. Yeah. That will kind of add some nice texture. Well, I, I think with something like this, you kind of have to lean into it, you know, and I think that sour cream, that is, that's, that's, that's awesome. And a jalapeno. Good call. All right, Matt. Next yep. up. Next up. Uh, so, you know, you're. It's, uh, I'm just going to paint a picture here. Uh, so, you know, it's like, uh, you know, lovely evening. You're outside and you crack into a nice tin of these beautiful sardines. Uh, sardines. So, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, very bold flavor, very forward. Um, you know, it needs something to sort of counter or compliment. What do you think? Well, when I have sardines, I tend to think of something celebratory. Ah. 
because you know my dad was never really into chefing it up, but when he brought the sardines out, you knew he meant business. So sardines and crackers and nothing else. So very salty. But I think of something that you want to like have effervescent. Lemon's obviously going to work with most seafood. So yep. I would do like a French 75 or something in like a flute Ooh. glass. It's like a little bit of gin to add that herbaceous element. Some, some lemon, a little bit of sugar and top it with champagne to really celebrate. And I think it would just cut through the fat of the sardines. Yep. It would uh, add the like acidity to the fish and the, the mouthfeel of the carbonation I think would, would pair well with sardines. Nice. I like that because, yeah, because you, sardines, you know, a little fatty, a little rich. You need to cut through that a little effervescence or something. Citrus. Excellent. Thank you. All right, Jeff, next one. Next one. Uh, so the uh, the complimentary flavors of peanut butter and chocolate. Ooh. Peanut butter and chocolate. Yeah. Like think Reese's Ooh. peanut butter cup or, you know, just like a dairy milk scoop through some crunchy peanut butter. Yeah. I'd say rum and peanut butter and chocolate. Ooh, yeah. cool. That's the way I would go with that. Um, maybe like a lot of people really like whiskey old fashions, but are rum old fashioned. Yep. You know, you gotta you gotta match the the sweetness and the the texture with more of that. Like, yeah. You you don't want to you want something to stand up to those bold flavors. You know, chocolate. Yep. And peanut butter. Are just gonna coat your mouth, so you need something to kind of cut through that. So, you know, like a nice quality aged rum, old fashioned, with you know a little bit of maple syrup as a sweetener and some Angostura bitters to uh, put all those flavors together. I think would be uh, you know a nice little combination. Fantastic! Awesome. Get the chocolate in the you know peanut butter. Eat it. Drink your old fashioned. You know, hang out in bed. And it's a good time. You know, eventually yeah. fall asleep with, you know, chocolate all over your face. Yeah, but then you wake up, you got that chocolate still. Yeah. 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 Stuff. All right. So uh, I can't phase you guys, but I got I got two more. Well, next one for you, Matt, and then we're going to do a ping pong. So you guys sort of uh, bounce back and forth on the on the finale. So anyway, uh, for you, Matt, I've got these two ripe plums. Oh, Your plum. plum, plums. That's easy. Plums. Plums, you can use vodka or uh, what we sometimes call the tofu of alcohol. Yep. It'll take on whatever <laughs> flavors that you need. Uh -huh. uh, but tree fruits, you can use a lot of different things with, you know, uh, gin, vodka. Rum's going to work well with that as well. Whiskey as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, gin. I would go again with uh, gin and plum. Because uh, nice. then you can pair like, you know, rosemary with that. Mm -hmm. uh, fresh lemon again and make like a gin sour with rosemary. I think that would be right up the alley perfect all right sounds good uh i'll uh, save these for later now uh what oh yeah okay so now it's the uh the ping pong challenge here so you guys are obviously a great team great collaborators with a clever barkeep and now uh dear friend bar so one of the things i always used to do and enjoy doing with my cooks is sort of you know riffing on a dish or where you sort of you know sort of build it by bouncing it back and forth so this is i think a fairly standard bar ingredient um, but I want to see uh, where you guys would place it and what you do with it. So let's give Frank's hot sauce a, a little hello. And uh, so maybe we uh, we start with Jeff and let's let's build a little cocktail here. Frank's hot sauce, my favorite hot sauce. Uh, I go tequila. Nice. Yeah, we let's get some spice going. Love spicy cocktails. Fuego. Tequila has like all that you know vegetal savory flavor that that you want and brings to a uh, cocktail. So, you know, you could, let's start with that. Cool. Yeah. What would you build on that? With I have to layer that now? I have to add another ingredient? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can like, you can finish it off. If you can cap it right there, if you think it's, it, it needs like one other thing or, you know, just, you, what do you think? Uh, oh man, <laughs> we, this is bringing me back to my days at making a, uh, shots and bars oh man get yeah. a shot called a flatliner <laughs> sounds great like, <laughs> sorry to distract from this whole thing but you gotta know what a flatliner we, is we gotta know it's yeah, a flatliner you just you uh you float you start off with tequila yeah. you float um sambuca on top because it has like more sugar content and it'll float on top oh. and then you then you dash the tabasco into the shot 
and it settles between the two layers. And it, so it's clear on the bottom, clear on the top, and it just yeah. has red line in between <laughs> two alcohols. And it's called flatliner, and you uh, you do the shot, and it's like super spicy, and, and then you flatline. Yeah, and it's sambuca, and there's tequila, and you know you usually do one more or five more. Right. So you just do one flatliner. So. <laughs> flatliner. Well, uh, I mean that I just have a new fold in my brain. That's awesome. Uh, so, are, are you about to mix a little something there, Jeff? Is that what I? Yeah, I'm. I'm all ready to make one of the cocktails uh, from dear friend that you know could work really well with uh brad's dish or even just to start start off your evening uh awesome. we we like to make a lot of like uh stirred bitter cocktails around here mm -hmm. but we wanted to make one for for the summertime um so if anyone's familiar with uh negroni which is a classic cocktail has uh gin campari as a bitter ingredient and then some sweet vermouth as uh, you know, something to balance the bitter and kind of lengthen up the drink. Uh, it's all spirit cocktail. It's one of those ones that you know, the first sip, you're a, a bit intrigued. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are maybe a bit put back by the bitterness, but at, over time, your taste buds adjust to the bitterness, and you know, you just want to drink more of it and you crave more of it. That's what's so interesting about uh, bitter ingredients is they leave you wanting more. So it's always great to start start a meal or start any experience off with something better. So uh, we're gonna start with um, a product called Brennevin, which is an aquavit from Iceland. Um, Brennevin, I know that stuff, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, I bought it at the duty-free shop in Reykjavik like a few years ago. There we go. <laughs> yeah. It's what everyone in Reykjavik drinks. Yeah. Um, Brennevin, nice. it's got a lot, like, so instead of um, your standard botanical blend with most gins, which are lemon and, you know, that juniper, mm -hmm. um, coriander, a couple other like anise things. Uh, this is using cumin and uh, a little bit of caraway as its botanical. So it's even more savory um, than, than a gin. So awesome. I'm going to start off with a Jager. And I'm going to measure out an ounce of Brennevin into a mixing glass. So Brennan, you can find it at the NSLC. Uh, great little product. Um, great to sub into cocktails um, for gin. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got your standard like Gimlet, um, Tom Collins, uh, even martinis, you can add a little bit of Brennan and it'll kind of like change the, the flavor profile. I imagine that's a great way too for somebody to uh to sort of get familiar with a new uh, a new alcohol when you know you're used to gin so much or something like putting it in a familiar uh, familiar drink and having it just sort of change that a little bit can sort of uh, be a gateway. Hundred percent. That's that's how we recommend and nice. how we usually work through uh, finding new products in the bars. You know, try them in cocktails that that might work or might add some uh, new flavors to. Cool. Uh, so for our, our bitter ingredient, uh, we're going to use Luxardo bitter which is, it's a white uh, bitter liqueur, uh, very similar to Campari. It has a lot of that uh, angelica root, um, super, super bitter. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of the Luxardo bitter cool. into our uh, mixing glass. So our bitter ingredient, and then uh, kind of our wine, our fortified ingredient is uh, a fun little, um, Fino sherry that's been infused with uh, pineapple. So if you're familiar with Fino sherry, it's it's bone dry sherry, almost salty, um, and great uh, mixed into cocktails. We're adding a little summer tropical vibe to it uh, by infusing the pineapple into it. Nice. Kind of adds a really nice, interesting flavor mm -hmm. uh, to the cocktail and smells wonderful. Um, the last kind of secret ingredient we use for this is a little bit of your summertime favorite. Malibu That's a classic if I've ever if I've ever seen a classic before. Yeah, this is yeah. Uh, we had to knock the dust off this bottle for sure. Yeah. So just a, a quarter ounce of um, Malibu rum. It's going to add like that coconut flavor, but also like a bit of a texture uh, to the drink as well. 
kind You'll of, know it's there, but it's not in your face. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. People, you have to think about it to yeah. pick it up. Um, and then the last ingredients, a little bit of bitters somewhere I've got right here. Uh, some cucumber bitters. So cucumber, pineapple, cucumber, um, coconut, all these flavors go together and are super, super refreshing. So I've a dash of the cucumber bitters, which you can find at the NSLC as well. Good. That's what I was going to ask. Where? What's a great place to buy it, to find a good selection of bitters? So NSLC. Is NSLC a has a few options. Yeah. Um, at the, yeah, at at their like, you know, larger stores. Peach mm -hmm. Boutique has a few bitters, and then uh, Evan McNeil, a bartender in Halifax, has been selling bitters uh, from his home. Boutique and bitters. Big wheel. What's the what? His, he has a website. Yeah, it's called Big Wheels Bar. It's on Instagram. You can get uh, some of the most most classic bitters. You can also catch Evan here at Dear Friend on Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. if anyone's looking for Peychaud's bitters, um, Scrappy's bitters, apothecary. Um, apothecary, I think Bitterman's bitters as well. He he's got them, and you would uh, gladly gladly sell you, and he will actually deliver. So. You know, cool. He's well, it, he's, he's a bitter dealer, but he's not bitter. So that's yeah. A, yeah, no, he's not at all. <laughs> um, so we've got all of our ingredients in here. You can see the cocktail is nice and clear, uh, all spirits. So we're going to yep. stir this one. And what this what the stirring does is it's uh, chilling down the cocktail and then adding some dilution as well. Um, we don't need to shake it because we're not looking for aeration. It's already got so much texture with you know, all the ingredients in here. Right. So we've got a ton of ice in our glass and we're just going to stir it down for about 30 seconds so that it's uh, super, super cold. When you come to Dear Friend, we, you'll notice on our menu is that we have almost half of our menu is stirred cocktails. So something that we're really trying to uh, educate people on. And I think those that, that tend to drink stirred cocktails absolutely love them. And those that don't are a little bit nervous of them. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand the point of a stirred cocktail is the mouth feels silky smooth, but it's also a drink that you can enjoy over a longer period of time ah. versus a shaken drink. Shaken drinks are more refreshing for the most part. Uh, where you know if you're going to have the one drink for the night, I would say you should try something stirred. Um, it's also as the ice melts going to become a little bit more diluted, and by by the time that you have that last sip. If you think of a Manhattan or an old fashioned, uh, it's a little bit watered down almost. And it's just like, you know, that knee jerk reaction to be ready to have the next one. Right. It's just like a great experience piece to drinking. And you can see now our mixing glass is all frosted up with condensation. Uh, really kind of a good sign that your cocktail is nice and cold and ready. Give it a little taste to make sure that, uh, you know, it's cold enough and it has enough dilution. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to strain this over uh, a nice, uh, large, cute, clear cube. Just Gorgeous. That. Woo, that's smooth. Yeah. Beautiful cocktail. We're going to garnish it up with a nice uh, burrito. Simple <laughs> cucumber, cucumber slice. There we go. This is called Carry Me Away. Carry Me Away. That's probably what you were saying when I brought up the Doritos. That yeah. looks excellent. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'll, I'll see you, you, you. This is not that cocktail, but I could, you know, pretend it is. It's just vodka. It's bread of it. Straight. Yeah. Straight. <laughs> I actually wince when I drink water. No. Um, I, I, I'm just so impressed by the shells behind you, and uh, it's uh, so cool to, to see, you know, if somebody comes into Dear Friend, they get such a, a custom experience from, you know, guys who really love what they're doing and know how to showcase their product, and that's, uh, I, I'm talking about you too, Brad. Um, oh, he's right here. He's nodding. Okay, okay. He got, yeah, of course he was, he's before I even said it, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's so cool to see, and you guys having that patio out back, I mean, the sunsets look incredible from back there. Sunsets yeah. are amazing. The patio has been a, a, a true blessing for us. We're super grateful. Uh, as we all know, we're you know trying to make people feel safe. Is and, and eat dining outside seems to be 
the thing to do, but the weather has certainly helped. Yeah. We haven't had a, a rain day yet. Um, and it's just like, it's great music. It's, it's chill. It's in a parking lot in Dartmouth. It's super Dartmouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's really important to, to our management team and that, you know, we're all from Dartmouth and, uh, we're super proud to be here and, and on Portland street. So, um, yeah, I, something that you had mentioned, actually, you know, uh, this could probably help people that are trying to, we always get the questions about bitters. So I'm glad that you asked that. Mm. We also get the question about like, how do you discover a cocktail or something new? Um, but Jeff and I try to like unmask all the secrets behind the bar. There's not, there's not a ton. If you know, like the, the mother sauces similar to cooking, you can, I start, like that analogy. Yeah. You can start to take some of the like different spirits. This looks really daunting. It does take a long time to learn all of these, but they all have a different nuance about them. Right. Each category. So say like, you know, this tequila, Cazadores, is, is really vegetal. So we make a cocktail that has red pepper in it, but also watermelon. Cool. Uh, so if you can taste these on their own and start to notice those nuances, it makes it easier to make your own cocktails at home. Um, so if you were to take Brennavin and, and evaluate it, and when we say evaluate, just put a little bit into a wine glass, smell it, look at it, taste it, mm -hmm. and find out what it means to you, then pair complementary flavors with it. Citrus juice is typically going to work. You know, uh, some type of sweetener and then maybe some type of dilution that doesn't have to always be ice or water. It could be soda water. It could be champagne. It could be wine. Um, if you start to use those as your building blocks and how to make something at home, it'll be really, really easy. But don't let like this be daunting for people when they come in. You know, we're we're happy to share our knowledge and to, to make everybody drink better. Awesome. Well, it's it's like that's how I sort of tell people, you know, how to approach a recipe when you know, they're making a recipe or something. You know, it's it's a template a lot of the time for introducing new flavors or, you know, once you get the baseline down, like the mother sauces, like you said, you can you can totally work around that framework. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And we love we love answering questions uh, about the cocktails, about, you know, cocktails that aren't on the menu, off menu stuff like we've got a lot of uh, really skilled and talented bartenders that are happy to kind of share the recipes, uh, share their their outlook and um, on cocktails and um, spirits. So, yeah, please hit us with lots of questions when yeah. you come visit. Yeah, and those of you that have never met us before, we did a lot of during COVID. We were doing a, like a Friday night cocktail series with different, uh, similar to what you're doing with the virtual. You know, grab your groceries, grab your booze, make some drinks with us, ask questions. But that's kind of um, how our company was born. It's just educating people and trying to, um, you know, lift this allure or this pretentiousness behind the bar. Yeah. And get back to what, you know, bars always were, which was just a place to come and hang out and relax and chat with your friends and, and not feel like, you know, uh, the bartender's separate from you. Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, this is, this is sort of a great thing to cap off on is the name Dear Friend is just such a great and inviting uh, bar name, especially, you know, and this time when we're all like separate and everything, but it's it's just, it's, 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 it's a hug of a name. It's it's just, it, uh, it really get, puts you in the mood of the place before you get there and, and puts people at ease, I think, having never been there. But <laughs> it just, uh, everything that I've seen, I'm really, really into. So it, it looks really awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been, a, it's been really fun. And everybody that's come in, I think is kind of, figured that out from the first greeting at the door to their first drink to the first bite um, and they're coming back. So um, we're really, we're really grateful for it. Well, and I think uh, it was on, uh, on when you guys first opened, I remember seeing on your Instagram account, you had the behind the mask thing, we introducing your staff and everything. I thought that was a really uh, great way to do that. You can't always see the people behind the bar, you know, with them, with the mask uh, off. So it's, just that other layer, another layer of welcoming. That's uh, that's just really neat to see, and, and sort of part of our new normal right now. Yeah. yeah. Aside from the mask, it's felt pretty like when we're in here, it's it's like an escape for us as well as the guests. And I think that's why it's similar to like prohibition, like when prohibition ended, and people were like flooding back. You know, everybody's been locked in their homes, so we've just seen like such a you know excited bunch of people to to remove themselves from the distractions of, of everything that is, is going wrong or that is uncomfortable in our, our world right now. Yeah. Uh, but for me personally speaking, aside from the mask, when I'm in here, I feel like I, I forget about um, 
the rest of the distractions. It's really it's really nice. Well, and it's it's kind of great to travel through 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 the the cocktails and through all your ingredients. You know, it just can give you a sense of place without being there. And I guess that's that's a really cool thing you can offer with a Dartmouth sunset. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I, I think we've been uh, we've been on here uh, quite a bit, and uh, it's been so awesome to have you on Chit Chat Chop finally. Uh, and uh, it's so great to see everything you guys are doing there at Dear Friend. And uh, with your awesome patio and your uh, intimate space inside, it's so uh, yeah, it's 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 exciting for Portland Street, and I'm really glad you guys are really uh, pushing the envelope right now with uh, what can be done in you know these these strange transitional times that we're in. Um, but uh, yeah, take a, take a chance, you know. It, it, what else do you have to lose at this at this stage for people that are in this industry? And 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 it's uh, it's been a risk that we're glad that we've taken. Um, and we also want to thank thank you and and Patty, who has been instrumental um, to the Clever Barkeep's development. I think she was one of the first people that we reached out to when we had zero idea <laughs> what we were doing. Um, and she welcomed us with a, you know a warm hug, that beautiful smile that she has, and you know shared all of the knowledge. Um, and she's always been just very very helpful to us. So we're very grateful for that relationship and for you um, and the kitchen, the whole Kitchen Door team. So thank you. Hey, thank you. It's it's always been a pleasure to work with you guys, and it'll be a pleasure to work with you in the future. Uh, and uh, Patty is uh, is fantastic, as we all know. Uh, and I'm sure she's watching at home right now, being like, Andrew, why were you on mute for the first five minutes of the show? Um, <laughs> uh, but hey, here we are, and uh, it was so great to have you guys. And thanks from the whole Kitchen Door team and everybody watching on, uh, on Facebook here. Uh, have a great night, guys. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks, Andrew. All right, chit chat chat. Hey parents, do you have any aspiring junior chefs at home? Well, I would love to show them some great tips and tricks to make awesome tacos and an amazing mac and cheese. So check us out, kitchendoor.ca for all your junior chefs at home. <laughs>